start a hello friends and enemies and um, Facebook friends and enemies oh what happened I'm waiting for a friend hmm uh, I'm waiting for Luis del Pino to join us let's see it's a zoom meeting and the topic is going to be on the on the philosophy of science we're gonna discuss an article that we were supposed to read called Boltzmann's Boltzmann's I just woke up concept of reality so I'm gonna admit my friend Luis Del Pino mm. okay there there he is Luis oh wait a minute how's that Oh, wait a minute. Uh, speakers. Hello. Wait a minute. Unmute. Mm. Mm. Unmute audio. Oh, oh there we what? go. <gasps> Luis. I was muted. I'm sorry. I'm cooch. You were muted. You unmuted yourself. I was Just trying. Like that. I was trying to unmute you from here, but it didn't. Have... <laughs> oh, but I can. I can mute you, like we this. Can mute uh. you, yeah? Or I can mute you. Unmute you. Oh, uh, also with a, with a, oops, with a keyboard, I can go Alt A, that mutes. Oh, that mutes me. Alt A destroy. No, Alt A uh, mutes me, and Alt A. <laughs> What's that? Alt A uh, mutes or unmutes me. It toggles this between them. This reminds me of uh, uh, what, what was the Toy Stories? Uh, <laughs> the spaceman, uh, and he says, "Go from no set set from uh, stun to kill <laughs> with his toy gun." <laughs> we could destroy the world with this toy here. <laughs> This is dangerous. Well, good morning. We are. Uh, good morning, Luis. Uh, ready to go. Del Pino. Do you get the feel that uh, David is not going to join us today? He said he could not host, but he did not say he could not attend. Oh, that's good. There's hope, and I uh, men mentioned it to Rami, and I uh, how was, and how I was mentioned it yesterday? and uh, I mentioned it to uh, a guy named well, I forgot his name. Oh, Mike Cordero. At a at a meetup yes last night, Rami and I attended a meetup yes. uh, with the Stoics with Dan Stoic, and so how did that go? And so and so I mentioned it to Mike Cordero. He might enjoy it. I don't know if what, I if what I, was the what was the, the subject of the meeting? Ah, oh, oh, Epi Epitectus, Epitectus, Epictetus, Epictetus, yes, yeah. <laughs> Epictetus. It was. Uh, it was. You need to. Uh, we need good. to go ahead and invite the. Oui. Yeah, I'm gonna do that on my phone. While I... Hold mm. on a second. I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna invite mm. the Francisco. What's wrong? Meetups. I. What's going on? Francisco, Francisco. Oh, I spelled it wrong. I was trying uh, to go to a meetup uh, website. Join, join Zoom. Oh, come on. 407. <laughs> 407. Dash uh, 46. Dash. Oh, you don't need, what? you don't need the dash, but yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, 407. Can you remind me the number? Uh, four eight six. Uh, I'm, no, wait a minute. Four zero seven four eight six eight six four two. That's my phone number. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Let's see. Okay, here we go. I sent him a little WhatsApp. Four seven four eight six eight six four two. Perfect. Let's see if we uh, if we have the pleasure. And 
what about David? You need to uh, wake see. him up, or Let's but by see. the way, what is the the subject of the day? Yes, we're we're uh, we're going to uh, discuss uh, Boltzmann's concept of reality. Huh. It could be too deep for this. Uh, <laughs> so Saturday morning. Yes, we're in the deep. God. But but uh, I I didn't read it uh, five times, but I I I listened and read. It once. <laughs> then I'm very curious, very curious to to uh, to know what you what you uh, think of what these two guys wrote about Boltzmann. Uh, yes. What, what is your impression? Yes, I I sensed that he that he um uh, he he was trying to make science more uh open minded and less dogmatic and so less he dogmatic. and he was trying to get scientists to say okay so you don't like this theory and you like that theory so that doesn't mean you should uh let go of this theory because uh it it has its it has its uh it has its what it, well, each well, theory value in their perspective it, they can describe reality the whole from a oh, different yes. angle. Yes, each theory is what uh is like a, a right representation. It, each theory is like a representation of reality because you can't uh say that a theory is reality. Each theory is is uh, a representation is, is our is very is, good is our so, tool is 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 our uh, a helpful image or whatever, right. to help yeah. us understand reality, to help us use reality, to help uh, mankind deal with reality, but it's not reality, so we shouldn't confuse the, a theory with reality and say, okay, this is the best reality, so we should uh, erase all the other that ones, because this is, is we should, uh, so you, we should you, consider you all it. realities, even, even, even that, even the reality, the theory of the, of, of, uh, that the earth is flat, that's that could be considered a reality that works for uh, uh, as far as the thing. eye can see, <laughs> and it works for us. So, so and that's what uh, people as as you're concerned, you even only look at the hundred square feet. Even the in even in the early Buddhist uh, uh, or there's the practice of offering the world uh, to the Buddhas, and it it, it imagines the, the uh, reality or the earth as something. Like a flat table, and there's things on top of it, and things underneath it. <laughs> it's really weird. So you 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 got you got the gist of it for sure. <laughs> but uh, what uh, one thing that uh, really uh, liked about that was precisely that openness that uh, what I, I I call uh, quite often anymore perspectivism. Because one mm. of the problems that the human mind has in understanding reality is a narrow a narrow uh, scope. So mm -hmm. if we look at things too closely, too narrowly, we miss the big picture. Mm -hmm. Then we make decisions that are inappropriate. We we, we get all uptight. We mm -hmm. don't we are we don't have this flexibility of perspective. Mm -hmm. um, the so that's that's the first thing. Relax. Yeah. It is what it is. The reality is what it is. Let's look at it from. Uh, a distance. We, let's not get too close to it because mm. then you, you, we get the tanha, the, the thirst feeling uh, for being and non-being, uh, for the sensory. We get too attached to our sensory impressions, uh, and we are not able to detach. Uh, in French, they say prendre du recul, to step back, look at reality, and be able to study it in it all. It's wholeness, and mm -hmm. oneness, in, is integrity. So when we do that, we're able to better, I would say, deliberate, better think, better, better uh, cognate, mm -hmm. and and not make mistakes with our emotions and impulses. So this the uh, anti-dogmatism, 
this uh, push towards uh, perspectivism, openness, flexibility of views is something that I really uh, right away connected, uh, I, I connected with. Uh, it is very reminiscent of E. O. Wilson, who mm. talks about consilience. Um, mm. I always mention it because he says that uh, one cannot know uh, uh, anything uh, from only one perspective. In order to know something very well, you have to use a, uh, a variety of different perspectives and sciences, uh, different angles, so you you know it well, you understand it fully. So in, in that regard, I was already making the, the, the parallel. So openness of views, uh, a uh, uh, Diversi this diversification of your your perspectives in understanding anything in this universe that is infinite and eternal. So uh, I, I found it extremely refreshing. Now we have to understand too that he uh, this uh, Boltzmann guy uh, was uh, under a lot of duress because he had it clear in his mind that uh, the universe was made of uh, tiny atoms. And that went against uh, the, the pervading scientific view uh, that uh, the, the universe was energy, but it was not quantized. So he, he had a very big battle, because in his mind he was absolutely uh, convinced that uh, gases, for example, which was his, his big stuff, uh, were mm. uh, composed of very tiny, tiny uh, particles, mm. molecules, um, uh, and, and atoms. I don't know if he knew the distinction between atoms and molecules. I, I don't know. I haven't studied enough in that. But he knew that things were broken down into individual little particles, and he uh, hypothesized that uh, the temperature of a gas in a specific place was directly due to the kinetic energy of each one of the particles. And he mm. did averages and com computations, and he came to the conclusion mm. that uh, within a, a certain volume with a certain amount of molecules flying around or you know, mm. moving around the space, uh, it would be determining the pressure, the temperature, and, mm. and uh, he could compute the average uh, speed of movement of uh, a molecule in, uh, in in the air, and you know, the, the speeds are stag staggering at the room temperature. Uh, I just read this morning that uh, a, a molecule of nitrogen uh, travels at 900 and something mm. feet per second or something crazy. I mean, uh, extremely uh, high speeds on an average. And of course, because they're so small, when they impact us, because right now there's air molecules impacting on my on my skin. Uh, they are so small that we we only feel the average kinetic energy of the whole uh, trillions of molecules flying around us, and uh, uh, that average of that kinetic energy gives the temperature of the room at the given pressure. That's the, that is phenomenal, and if, you know, a hundred and some years ago. Uh, this guy was already in his oh. mind understanding this dynamic uh, play of molecules and particles and everybody was looking at him like he was absolutely crazy. Oh, you mentioned uh, consilience, the unity yes. of knowledge by a, a uh, Edward Osborne Wilson. Yes. Why why do you find that book uh, uh, va valuable to your uh, to your view of how to deal with reality? I discovered Wilson after I had been, spent a lot of time studying by myself um, the issues or ideas or questions about uh, life and what should I do, how should I live, how should I feel, uh, what is the right thing, what is the wrong thing, what is practical, what is not. And I had been spending, spending quite a bit of time reading. I started reading uh, the different uh, spiritual Bibles and then I read the, uh, 
many, many philosophers, and then I ended up uh, discovering Buddhism, the Dharma, or Dhamma. And I started making my own world vision. I discovered that I needed to precisely uh, understand statements or conclusions from other thinkers uh, with a very open perspective, because some of the things that I read made no sense whatsoever at the beginning. And then as I changed my views or my perspectives, I could find sense in them, but only from that perspective. So what doesn't make any sense from perspective A makes a heck of a lot of sense from perspective Z. Mm. So if you uh, use A and Z, then you are able to see a concept, an idea, a belief, or a feeling, or uh, a truth uh, much better. Because you can say, yes, uh, this is uh, this truth that we're talking about, but this truth from this angle makes a lot of sense from this angle, doesn't make any sense. So you, it helps you uh, make your thinking dynamic. And after I had come to this conclusion, I bumped on this, the uh, Wilson, E.O. Wilson, that says, that kind of coined the, 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 the term consilience, which is, to use uh, uh, a priori very different sciences like physics and uh, uh, psychology, for example, two, two completely different sciences, physics and psychology. One just measures what is, the other one measures how we feel, how we think about what is. And in the combination of two apparently absolutely different sciences that have nothing to do with each other, when you can, can find concealings between them, then you understand any uh, uh, idea or, or conception or term that is pinned between them. And <clears throat> what he, he wrote a book in, in, in which he has a, a little diagram and it has a point in the middle, it has like a, a square with four Subsquares, and in, in the middle, there is a concept, an idea, or so, something that we're discussing, and then each one of the squares is different sciences, like uh, I don't know, climate science, economics, uh, physics, and uh, psychology, or you know, something like that. And he says that the more we go uh, closer to the, the, the theme at hand, uh, the less each one of the sciences is involved in it. It's just like, you know, what is in, in psychology does not pertain to uh, physics. But as you go wider in your understanding, if you go wider in your perspective, all of a sudden, the same point that you are analyzing now is involved in both sciences. You're able to kind of bounce off you know, from the physical point, from the psychological point, from the climate science point, from the economics point, mm. I'm trying to look for a word that describes that, that's used more in politics, uh, so, something that, that uh, when, when uh, Barack Obama became president, he, he was trying to make it his... Um, an effort of, of of going across the aisle and bringing them in. What is that called? Where, where you? Where there you... is a word in politics that you <laughs> I forget use, what it is. is. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I, I, it will come it, back. It comes I know exactly to me. what you're talking. <laughs> where, where you're trying to to bring them in and and not not necessarily negotiate. It's funny. No, no, because it's a, it's a word when you hear it, it makes it sound like you do not cooperate on both sides of the aisle, but that's what it, it is. It is uh, talking about it, using both sides of the aisle to create or generate the policy or a change uh, in the law. But then the problem is then, then the, then your constituents or, or 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 people looking back in history and says, ah, oh, he 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 went on their side and didn't That's push right. for uh, what we wanted, and and so That's he wasn't right. good. 
but it but in a, in science and in what well, um, I, I would say that a good word to use other than concealing is that, that people uh, typically haven't uh, bumped uh, against or they haven't studied it or they don't understand it very well uh, um, we could use the word a, a super perspective you know like a an omni perspective so looking at any phenomenon from an array of different perspectives well, there's a definition in a dictionary for consilience. It says, agreement between the approaches to a topic of different academic subjects. So you're agreeing, uh, looking at all the different approaches, uh, uh, all the different academic sciences, and trying to come to some agreement, especially in science and humanities. And it sounds like, from the article, uh, Boltzmann's concept of reality, that, that he was try, trying to do that because, because yeah, I imagine at that time, that was before uh, Einstein's uh, theory of reality and, and maybe uh, ideas of, of, uh, of the... Um, what is it? Uh, quantum and, and other things they were starting to think about. And so maybe they were arguing, there were uh, philosophers versus scientists. Well, well, philosophers that were involved in science were, were promoting that the, the, there, there shouldn't be uh, atoms. And then scientists that were, that were uh, using data were, were trying to, show that there are atoms as things and maybe uh this Boltzmann uh was trying to do some kind of consilience um, he was trying to uh to tell he was trying to tell the um he was trying to tell the philosopher scientists the i guess the idealist kind of scientist versus the the realist kind of scientist like the realist kind of scientists were, were promoting that atoms do exist as uh, as inherently existent objects, and idealist kind of scientists were trying to say, no, there's no that there's no such thing as atoms, or or, or maybe it's just energy or something else. Maybe, uh, and so he was trying to come to a. a or trying to satisfy both sides, he was trying to say that that okay, you you idealists, go go ahead and continue that way, but but think of um, oh you're back, oh I have to click on admit, yeah the yeah Boltzmann was trying to tell the idealist philosopher scientist to not uh, get stuck on that there isn't atoms. But to treat uh, the uh, the idea of atoms as as a model that that will help uh, deal with uh, experiments and go ahead and continue uh, not not having to believe, but just treat it as as a a model a rep a representation perhaps that that might work in doing in running experiments and then. And that, that maybe that was kind of his consilience or to try to bring bring the other side in. He went across the aisle. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Or I'm still having... Oh, you're, you're muted. <laughs> Let's, or maybe I have to unmute you. Let's see. I'm uh, sorry, I was... Oh, now I muted you. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing no, that happened sorry. last time. I, I disconnected without uh, I didn't know <laughs> when I came in. But I was going to say that the, the um, partisan is the, the word yeah. in politics. The partisan no. effort. So basically two... Or maybe two, there's still uh, another uh, word. Uh, opposite poles in politics that make an effort together. But it's partisan because each one each party has their own thing. So but they, they come together. So partisan to me sounds like uncooperative, you know, only from one side, from one party. 
but part of the network is when they, they both work together across the aisle. So yeah, so so Boltzmann was was trying to uh, work across the aisle to bring the idealist philosopher scientist over to the idea that that okay, so don't accept that atoms exist, but at least treat it as a as a model as a as a theory and so maybe that's why he went into to treating a workable perspective yeah to treating theories not as 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 real but as Dog. models as a, as a representations as as a what, what uh, yeah I find so beautiful in this kind of thinking uh, whether it is from Boltzmann or from uh, from uh, Wilson in this case is that in my own personal experience, after spending a lot of time thinking about different different uh, ideas, problems, objects, phenomena, I came to the conclusion that the application of consilience or partisanship in our own understand our own representation of life, because you know you and I are not uh, scientists. So, but we still deal with reality, just like scientists do, but mm -hmm. scientists do deal with reality with very uh, specific items, mm -hmm. topics. I want to know what the temperature is doing, why, when I put my hand in a hot pot, and like it burned, what, what is happening there? So they are very specific in what they analyze. But you and I, we deal with reality in a heuristic kind of way. Yeah. Make it simple. Let's not complicate ourselves much. If it feels good, uh, if if it's okay, if I'm okay with that, that's what that's what I understand. That's why I, mm. I decide, and that's the way I live. So we are, in a way, amateur scientists representing reality. Mm. Maybe not with formulas, but you could say that our behavior, our conduct, our life, the way we behave, our character, the way we interact with things and people are our formulas. Yes. Our scientific formulas to represent what is, which is reality as a whole. Yes. And, sure. and my discovery has been that if I use this kind of approach, the Boltzmann approach or the Wilson approach, in my the way I, I look at my cup of coffee or the way I drink coffee or the way I talk to you, the way I, I position my life, the way I eat, the way I sleep, the way I uh, go to work, the way I buy groceries at the store, the way I drive on I-4, all that, this openness of, okay, let's consider the following and look at it from different perspectives, helps, is it brings on promesis, the, the, the Greek word for um, practical wisdom, which then reverts, remember the trickle-down wisdom, this, this uh, practical wisdom reverts into all the pyramid of the Maslow's pyramid that goes down all the way down to the, what I eat, who I, I, I live with, uh, how I conduct myself, if I watch TV or I don't watch TV, if I spend my time doing one thing or the other, if I do exercise or don't exercise, if I become a vegan versus a, a <gasps> Mike. et cetera, et cetera. So all of that has been, I can confirm... In my own Mike, life. welcome, Mike. Unmute yourself. Say hello. <laughs> He's outside. It's Morning, nice. Morning, Morning, Mike. Mike. How are you? Yeah, living science fiction. Uh, are you in oh. Chicago or something like that? I'm in Chicago. Wow, it looks nice. Nice it's background, amazing. by the way. Nice background. Look at Is that... that is that are you on a on a phone or something? I'm on my deck. My deck, deck. on your deck. But That's your backyard. Yeah. Are you using wow. a a laptop? Yep. Mm. I'm actually an iPad. An iPad. Oh, that's pretty well, good. It's, it's uh, pretty I'm good resolution. You, you, Thanks for inviting. Thank you for no. inviting. Very glad that you could join, that you could uh, get on this one. This one is a good view. We, we started just a few minutes ago, Jairo uh, um, uh, and, and myself. Jairo uh, is hosting. Uh, I have invited Francisco, but he hasn't shown up yet, and David uh, Norton, who has been uh, present uh, previously. Is, I don't think he's going to make it today. I don't know why. But we 
we are talking about a beautiful, um, maybe beautiful I'll... idea. Um, I think I, I shared it with you yesterday. The <clears throat> this uh, short uh, writing about the Boltzmann uh, concept of reality. Boltzmann was a 19th century physicist and mathematician. He became very, very famous. He had a very tough time in his life. As a matter of fact, he, he committed suicide when I was, he was uh, 60 little. Um, he, he had bouts of depression and everything, but he was a genius. The guy was a genius. And he was one of the first uh, physicists to uh, have the intuition that reality was made of tiny little particles. Particles. So the, uh, the yeah, particles, uh, atoms, molecules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, of course, uh, at the time, uh, he was way ahead of his time. So of course, he suffered for it. He was ridiculed. He he, he had a lot of opposition, and uh, he he had a very tough time. He had a very tough time because for most of his life, uh, in the academic world, although he was recognized as a freaking genius, he is most fundamental ideas about the nature of reality, which is what the, uh, us guys talk about most of the time in non-scientific terms, more into philosophical and psychological terms. He, he had a, a very, very big opposition, was never recognized until his death. And then, lo and behold, uh, right after his death, uh, Planck himself, uh, 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 Max Planck, uh, recognize him as a freaking genius, and he said, "Yes, he was right all along. That's the way, mm -hmm. you know the 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 quant the quantic uh, quantum nature of reality. He was already into a as of that. But what I was interested in, and uh, I kind of studied his, his uh, character. Louis, I, I'm so sorry. I've got a just the dog is barking and it's waking up neighbors. I'll be right back. Mm. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I hate to may interrupt. Oh. I wonder if I can. No, I can't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to call. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna try to call um, Rami. Let's see if I can call Rami. Or David. Let's see. So I will continue what you and I were talking about, which is that I. It is my personal experience. Oh, you're back. So um, I discovered this uh, little uh, essay uh, non-scientific language uh, and the ideas of Planck, uh, of uh, Boltzmann, I'm sorry, and uh, he, uh, even shared some of uh, his, uh, his writings. And in them, uh, I immediately uh, saw a lot of uh, myself or my ideas, no. not in scientific terms, but in philosophical terms. Uh, and one of them, one of the most important things in Heidel agreed with me, that he talks about uh, uh, um, uh, openness You're welcome of mind. To join us. He talks about uh, meeting uh, getting away from ID uh, is uh, four zero seven four eight six eight six four two. He My talks phone about how every physical, uh, 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 every theory, uh, scientific theory, is a representation mm. of reality, uh, mm -hmm. which is you know what is. The, the real real is that, and then we can represent ourselves that reality, and then we try to make sense of it. So I immediately felt very comfortable with that because uh, and you and I have discussed Wilson, E.O. Wilson and consilience, that is looking at any phenomenon. And when I say phenomenon, I'm talking about a, an object or an idea, because an idea is a phenomenon or a feeling or an emotion or anything, and look at it from uh, the, an open, a super perspective, uh, which in, 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 uh, includes many different uh, 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 angles and sciences. And, and, you know, a fact can be analyzed from many different ways. And the more, the more ways you look at it, the different angles you look at it, the more open-minded you are and you better understand it. Do we so, agree? Uh, sorry? Question. Can I ask a question? Yes. Unless you want to continue along. No, no, no. That, that was it. That was it. Go ahead. 
So what is these aspects of reality? The aspects of reality that the, the, the model that you're describing, like for, so that there, there are many different, so to be open-minded, meaning that there are many different aspects of reality. There are many different ways to look at the different aspects of reality. But there's only one? Well, there's only one reality. Obviously, the same tree that is behind you, we look at the same tree. There's one tree there. Now, what we feel about the tree, how we think about it, how we analyze it, is it good, is it bad, is it beautiful, is it ugly, uh, what is it made of, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the different representations yeah. exactly. of what is behind you. So, so for so, example, a biologist, uh, a physicist, a painter, an impressionist, completely different. And a psychologist, and a philosopher, and everything. This reminds me of the, uh, the fable of the, uh, the elephant and the three blind men. So, one is uh, feeling... David, one is this is Cairo. Uh, Join us sees at a, a Zoom meeting the tail, sees a, right uh, now uh, uh, with Luis Del Pino horse. and Mike. And the other is uh, the feeling ones the, we uh, have the leg and the, Saturday the mornings. It's, it's on. True. With That's a, a very meeting good, uh, ID is my phone it's number four zero seven four eight six eight six four two. You make it very clear no right password. there that if you uh, only focus on one as a, a one perspective of that phenomenon, you miss out on the big picture, and you make decisions, and you you do actions that are uh, flawed because you don't realize you're dealing with an elephant. You think you're dealing with I don't know uh, a piece of rope. Or yeah. The interesting part of that is if the three men were to be able to communicate with one another as we are, they would understand by putting these pieces together that this in fact I'm is going an to a beautiful analogy because as you are saying three men to get looking at an elephant, see the elephant much better than one uh, one minute. So now I take this further. If I hey Ken, reality, join us reality, like, and anyone else. Like, Meeting ID uh, is four zero seven four eight six eight six four two. And as myself.